welcome back to Her Sports, Ireland's only platform dedicated to covering women in sports. Today we are joined by track cyclists Shannon Curley and Emily Kay, who will be representing Team Ireland in just a few weeks' time. Um, so congrats to both of you. How are you feeling about going to the Olympics? Yeah, um, for me, this is my second Olympics. Um, I went to Rio as a sprinter and um, I was there on my own. So to have Emily joining me this time, um, I'm really looking forward to the whole experience. Yeah, and it's my first Olympics. Um, but I started cycling when I was five, so 20 years ago, and it's kind of been my dream to go to Olympics since, you know, for 20 years. So, yeah, it's pretty surreal, but I think we're both really, really excited. So when um, when did that official call come in? Like, when did you find out you're going to be going? Uh, well, we found out. What was it two? Yeah, two, two weeks, weeks ago. Yeah. But we weren't allowed to say anything. <laughs> we had to wait for the official announcement. So that was eating us up. We, I think, on the slide we told family and close friends, but. Other than that, we were trying to keep it very under wraps, which was really hard. But, um, yeah, when we were able to get it out there for the world, it was pretty exciting. So, Shana, this is your second Olympics. Um, do you think it's going to be different this time around now that you have Emily beside you? Yeah, um, I think last time I was there on my own, so it was just... I guess trying to branch out and meet other people from other sports that I'd never met. So I wasn't such a loner, I guess, getting around the village. But um, the fact that I'm there with a teammate, a friend, like it just makes everything so much easier. You're more comfortable, you're more relaxed and, yeah. So there seems to be a strong team of um, Irish women in cycling at the moment. How do you think the team has developed and the last few years is it getting a lot stronger? Yeah, no, I think it's such a strength in, depth in women's cycling in Ireland at the moment. You know, we, we've we qualified the team for Madison and obviously we get to race in the Omnium as well. But, you know, even the women's, we've got a team, women's team pursuit squad who are just getting stronger and stronger, you know, every year. And, you know, I think it's a really exciting time for women's cycling island really because I just think there's going to be you know more medals more results coming it's just yeah really exciting so Emily can you give uh people watching maybe a simple explanation of the Madison and how it works um it's quite confusing if you've never seen it before so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, I think you know when everyone watches it and it's just kind of like a whirlwind of just all these riders going around but uh, yeah, the Madison for women is 120 laps um, of the velodrome. Um, and there's two of us in the race, but only one of us races at one time. Um, sprints every 10 laps uh, for points. Um, and every so often we um, exchange. So we'll swing each other into the race and then the other rider will rest while they're uh, racing. So, yeah, it's 120 laps trying as a point, the point that, uh, we do it as a pair and we share the workload. Quite exciting that way. So it's obviously like quite dependent. Uh, if one person doesn't work, the other person doesn't. So what is your training relationship like to prepare for that? Yeah, well, I mean, we have been training together. Uh, I mean, we train on the road, gym, track, everything we do is together. So um, you have to be confident in your partner and I think the way we're training, it's good to see that we are quite confident in each other and we know we can get out there and trust each other when we go up. Yeah, pretty good as well because, see, you know, my, as your, you know, as your teammate, so, you know, we best each other because we know that's going to get, yield us the best results. So, you know, when we're training and we're doing efforts and, you know, we'll, we cheer each other or push each other to be better because we know that when we race, you know, we need each other and we need each other to be strong. So, yeah, I think it definitely pushes you having a teammate, knowing that you're kind of going into this event together and, you know, racing as hard as you can. So, Shannon, you switched from uh, Kieran, which is a sprint event, to Madison. Um, can you talk to me about uh, why you made the change and which one is harder? 
Um, I have to say definitely the Madison is a lot harder. But um, I think I've always been a racer. So for me, the Kieran was just another race. I guess I was up against all the big, strong, fast girls. But um, it suited me more so than trying to do, I guess, a pursuit, which I've never been very strong at. So I wanted just to get out there and race. And um, I was lucky enough to actually get my way through and qualify for Rio. But in Rio, I was definitely there just making up numbers. And I knew if I really wanted to push on and get a result, I needed to go back to what I did as a junior and look to the endurance events. Yeah, sorry, I thought you were going to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I could. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess to bring it back probably a long time ago for the both of you, um, no offence intended, by the way, uh, how did you get into cycling and why cycling of all sports? Well, for me, um, I grew up as an 800-1500 metre runner and um, I had a lot of wear on my body as a kid and I was told to get on a bike for rehab following a couple of knee injuries and from that I realised um, I was pretty handy on a bike. I did a few triathlons and realised I was never going to be a swimmer. Um, so I continued running for a little bit but then made the switch over completely to cycling when I was 13. Um, yeah, and uh, I was five, and um, my dad did a bit of mountain, like not nothing serious, but with, he had a mountain bike magazine. Um, and the then current Olympic female mountain bike champion was a woman called uh, Paolo Pezzo, and she uh, raced in pink and purple leopard kit. Um, and pink was my favorite color at five. Um, so I said, Still mind now. <laughs> I said to my dad, I want to I wanna race bike and I want to wear a pink kit. Um, so I went to my local club and literally just, well, it's 20 years later and I'm still going. So I just completely fell in love with the sport and I've never really done anything other than bike. So. Have, um, have you had a chance to wear a pink kit yet yourself? <laughs> I did until about the age of Mine. <laughs> probably realise. Um, yeah, no, I've not been pink. I've not, no, I've not been pink for quite a few years now. But I think I prefer green now, so it's okay. <laughs> Great to hear. So, um, just in terms of body image, this is something uh, most people are conscious of at some point, especially women competing in sport. Um, have you ever experienced this in cycling, or is it not as bad, maybe, in as it will be in other sports? Oh. But, I mean, it's just as high in cycling. Also in road racing, um, I guess, to be a good road rider, the, the aim is to be light. Like, you want to be as light as you can, so to get over those mountains. We still experience the, I mean, you get your crew and everything in that sense. So it is still very predominant in our sport too, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think... Obviously, I've been on a bike since I was five and grown up in, you know, on one hand, grown up in being an athlete and seeing my body in that sense, but also being a, being a young girl and growing well. And I think for a big proportion of my career, I really struggled with, um, you know, an eating disorder and stuff like that. But I think I've really got to the point now where I've learned that my body is my strength and it's what makes me go fast on a bike. It's what gets me through every bike race but yeah I think it's it's definitely a difficult area I think definitely for obviously we understand as female athletes but I think there's more females talking about it and hopefully you know there's more awareness and young girls will kind of start to see strong female athletes and aspire to kind of be like that and yeah. So you're great role models for oh, I didn't know what I was saying there um yeah. <laughs> um yeah so obviously you're great role models for uh, young girls and young cyclists especially what advice would you have for people who maybe haven't gotten a bike on their life um and want to take up the sport um i think 
one thing, it, it is a very male-dominated sport. So for girls, getting into it young and sticking with it has always been such a hard thing. But the more opportunities that are coming about now and seeing the development, especially in our whole Irish track team over here, and, I mean, our team is um, majority of females. So I think they can see that there is a pathway now. So it's just a matter of sticking at it, like... Yeah, that's all I can say really, like without really yeah, going too much into things. But yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think as well, like, you know, a huge part of my career and what's kept me going at, at times is is kind of finding other female athletes female cyclists who kind of understand things. You can go to them with, you know, questions on you know, there's obviously some parts of the sport that male male athletes won't understand. And having female cyclists around me who I ask questions, you know, even stuff about like, oh, what chamois are you riding? What, you know, what setup do you have on your bike? Or I'm, I'm struggling with this. I think I've learned so much from the female cyclists around me that I think really trying to find uh, the, the female community where you can ask those questions and you can be supported and inspired with I think is is really important so yeah, I think um when you have like a community like that you know women support women um so it's great to have people around and like know what you're going through that you can ask um questions to as well so bring it back to Tokyo uh I know it's a few weeks away yet but how are you feeling right now and how do you think you'll be feeling closer to time <laughs> Well, right now we're so tired. <laughs> yeah, it's our rest day today, and the two of us are both like, <laughs> we needed this. Um, yeah, no, we're really looking forward to it. We are doing everything we possibly can out on the road, on the track, in the gym, supporting each other, and just we just want to go there in the best form possible and show the world what we can do. Yeah, I think definitely it's like every because every week well, I think we're flying there on a Saturday, so every Saturday I'm like, oh, now it's four weeks and we're getting, we're getting close. And I think the nerves are building because obviously you just want to be in the best place possible to deliver the best results. So I think you know we're excited and we want to get there. We want to show where we are and what we can do. But yeah, I think, well, definitely for me, there's a bit of nerves of, you know, will I be ready or, you know, and it, it feels really weird because obviously we've had an extra year, but I'm still like, oh, I don't think we've got enough time. I need, <laughs> I need more sessions or I need more of this, but I think you'll always feel like that. You know, there'll always be a bit of you that's a bit like, oh God, if only I had a bit more time, but, you know, we've both done everything that we can do. We've trained us, you know, we've done every session trained as hard. So, you know, we're, we'll be in the best possible place that we can be, but yeah. Still quite nervous. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that will settle um, closer to the games or else Shannon might be doing that Madison event by herself. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be. <laughs> um, yeah, so what is the best case scenario? Uh, I know it's kind of hard to think about right now, but what, what do you want to achieve out of Tokyo when you get there? Um, basically, we want to have, like... A top 10 result would be really good for us and we're definitely capable of it. Um, but you always look for a bit more mm -hmm. that. Um, saying anything more. We want to get out there and basically give our best performance. Um, we know we're going strong, we're fit, we're fast and we can race. So we just want to go out there and deliver our best race possible. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thanks a million for taking the time to speak with us and we wish you the very best of luck at the Olympic Games. Thank, Thank you. you.